All right, so let's be perfectly clear here. If you have a database with data inside and you are not using AI to search that data, you're definitely leaving stuff on the table. So today I'm going to show you step by step how you can use the power of generative AI to search, to do semantic searching on your database without leaving your database. So this is just writing SQL queries that will have access to open AI models to search your data. It's super, super cool. Now we're gonna do everything here using a Postgres database that I'm gonna initialize from scratch. I'm gonna show you just small table inside and how you can create your queries that take advantage of AI. We're gonna be using an extension that's called, I have it here, PG AI. This is a free extension that you can run on your uh, Postgres database. It works together with extensions like PG Vector uh, that will, I mean, you don't have to have like a separate vector database. Uh, I think vector databases had a great run, but right now if you're using Postgres, there is really no need to go anywhere else. You can do it all inside your Postgres database. So uh, here is what we're going to be doing. Okay. I'm going to be creating a brand new, I already created it. I'm going to show you how to create it in case you want to just follow along. Uh, a brand new Postgres database. In this case, I'm using Timescale. You can come here, just click on new service and just this is going to create a, a, a new Postgres database for you, a blank database. Uh, if you have a Postgres uh, SQL server somewhere, that's also fine. It's going to work no matter what. Now I created uh, my service here, it's, it's been running. And this service, as you can see here, I have this service URL and that URL is the one where I'm going to connect to, to build just a very simple Flask application, uh, to just show you like a couple buttons and show you how the queries run. That's it. So this is where I'm going to store all of my data. So I have my project here. And if you're following along, uh, you're going to have access to this repo. Uh, you can just go step by step here to do exactly the same stuff that I'm, I'm going to be doing here. So first, you're going to have to initialize your Python environment. We're going to be building a very simple Python application to show you how this works. Uh, and then I want you to create an environment variable, uh, an environment file that will contain the OpenAI API key and the database uh, connection string. That connection string is this one here that I'm getting from Timescale. Again, you can you can uh, put together uh, yours depending on where you have your database. So those two are going to be in that environment file. And then I'm going to export those two variables to my uh, environment here. So in this case, if I do I'm going to list my environment variables. I'm going to do grep. I'm going to do database. I just want to make sure it's already exported into my environment. Uh, it is. You can get it here. So all good. Uh, just make sure this database contains the password as well. So I added the password here. Obviously, I'm going to take down the service before publishing the video. But just so you are aware, the password will go into that uh, connection string there. All right. So. When I finish doing that, and I already have my service created, obviously, I'm going to connect to my service. Now, notice that here I'm passing a specific option before connecting to the service. I'm creating this, this variable, which is called PG options, and that is like this. And you're going to find this in the PGA, PGAI documentation. Like if you go, I think it's over here, how to configure PGAI for OpenAI. They're going to give you multiple options on how you can configure it. Uh, this is the one that I'm using. Uh, so you can either go there or just follow this specific instruction. This is how I'm going to connect to the service. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to connect to uh, now I'm, I'm inside my timescale DB where I should have uh, of the tables and all of the stuff that I already created. Now, if you haven't done this before, you can create the extension. And this is the command that you're going to run inside your database uh, in order to make that extension available to you. And now I can just list out all of the models that OpenAI has available for me. So 
If I do this select, notice that I'm just selecting from AI.OpenAI list models. And here are every single model that I can just use together from inside my PostgreSQL database. And that's awesome. We're going to take advantage of that in just a second. By the way, if I go to the PGAI documentation, here you can see there is a section here called usage that with a bunch of examples on how you can use uh, the, 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 the functionality of the extension. For example, if you wanted to generate text, you can use the chat complete a section here. You can go to that section and get an example on how to do that. Let me go there. Uh, there is an explanation here how you will set up like that query. Look at this, select AI, open AI, chat complete. Uh, I'm gonna be using here GPT-40. And there is, this is how you would build that query. Uh, let's just run this for the sake of an example. Remember, I'm inside my PostgreSQL database here. So this is a query that's running from inside the database. So as you can imagine, you can join this query uh, with anything else. You can generate text for your data. You can do all of that right inside your, your database. And here's the answer. In June, Alabama typically experiences warm to hot weather, All right? So that's that's pretty cool. That's awesome. So that works. So the next step that I want you to do is just to create a database. Here is what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to create a very simple database that will contain uh, some news articles. We're going to import some data from a public data set. And what we want to show, or what I want to show you, is how to search that data both using full text search, which is just a traditional search that you've been running so far, and compare that with generative search or basically semantic search to be more technically uh, accurate. Uh, we're going to be running both searches side by side, right? Full text search and embedding search, right? So this is the table that is going to contain all of the articles. So it's going to have an ID. Every article is going to have an ID. Uh, some highlights, the text of the article, and it's going to have a, uh, a couple more columns. One of those columns is going to be an embedding column. And that embedding column is going to be a vector with 1536 uh, positions, or you know that's going to be the size of the vector. And that is because embeddings generated by OpenAI, uh, those have that size. So we're going to be embedding these articles into this column here called embeddings. And there's going to be another column called TSV, right? Which is going to be like a text search vector. And this is where we're going to, or this is the column that we're going to be using to do the full text search. Okay. So that is that table. I already have it here. So I want you to create that table. And then I want you to create an index. Uh, on that specific TSV column. And as you can see, this index is the one that's going to allow us to do the full text search. All right. So uh, that should be pretty, pretty simple to create pretty fast. After doing that, you're going to be running this particular script. Now, let, let me open that script so you see what's going on inside. It's very simple. So uh, this is loading a public data set, just CNN Daily Mail data set. And this data set is getting the test data here and it's shuffling that test data. And it's getting a, a thousand random articles from the test data. And then it's going to be uh, updating the table, basically inserting those 1,000 articles into database. So this script will do that. It's connecting, obviously, to the database. So you need to have that environment variable. Um, that's it. After you do that, you should be able to Come here and select the number of articles from the CNN Daily Mail, and you should get a thousand articles. So after you run the script, you should have your table containing 1,000 articles. Now, remember, so far here, we have not done anything with that embedding uh, column. We only uploaded the ID, the highlights, and the article text. Now we need to generate the embedding for each article because in order for us to do semantic search, we need to pre-generate those embeddings. Here is one thing that I'm not going to use here, 
but I want you to keep in mind because it's really, really important. The PGAI extension supports, uh, let me see where I can find that. So supports automatically creating and synchronizing vector embeddings with something that they call the PGAI vectorizer. And this is a video that you can watch. So in my particular case, in this example, I'm going to manually generate those embeddings. Uh, just keep in mind that you can automatically generate them. <laughs> All right, so at this point, we're ready to just generate those embeddings. So here is an update SQL query that I wrote that will generate those embeddings. And let's try to break it down. It's very, very simple. Okay, so we're going to be updating the CNN Daily Mail table. We're going to be setting the embedding column to the AI.OpenAI embed, right? And this is if I go to the OpenAI documentation, uh, remember I told you there were like a list of, of things that you could do with it. Uh, you can go to embed. And this is going to show you how to generate embeddings, right? So this is basically what I'm using here. So update that table, set the embedding column to the output of embedding the article column using the text embedding ADA002 or ADA002. This is the embedding model that I'm using. There are multiple embedding models. Uh, provided by OpenAI. You can pick the one that you want. This running this query will take a few minutes because we have 1,000 articles. It's going to take a few minutes uh, for this query to finish running. So just be a little bit patient. Obviously, I did that already, but you should you can do that. Uh, you should do that on your database. After doing this, uh, you're going to create an index on that embeddings column. And that index is uh, it's going to be using this algorithm here. It's the HNSW, which stands for Hierarchical Navigable Small World uh, Algorithm. And this is just so we can efficiently search for these vectors here in this, in, for these embeddings here. Okay. So, so set this, so generate data, uh, create the index. And at this point, we should be good to go with everything that we need to do on that database. So that's how I prepared that database. So in your case, what you're going to have to do with your data, imagine that you have uh, a table with data that you're searching over, description from products, whatever it is. You want to, number one, create that new column that represents the embeddings of your products, for example. Number two, you want to generate those embeddings. And just for testing purposes, you can do it manually like this. And number three, now you can start uh, taking advantage of those embeddings by searching over those embeddings. So that's the next step here. That's what I'm going to show you. So I'm running here like a very simple uh, Flask application. It's just, just, just you know, an index page here with a couple of buttons. And one button is going to run a text, uh, a full text search. So if I click on that button, that will return uh, articles from that database that matched the criteria that I set behind this button. I'm going to show you each button what it does. Uh, so let's go to the, the code here so you see how simple this is. So let's start with the full text search. This is what happens when you click on the full text search button. OK, so let's look at the query. So the query is select ID and the article from the table where the article, and now we're going to do a text search query. So this is how you will do it using, using Postgres. So we want to include words death or kill and police and car and dog. So we want to return any articles that contain death or kill and police and car and car and dog. Okay. So any of those words should be present or these three words should be present and either death or kill should be present. That is just a regular full text search. So then I'm going to get the output of this. I mean, obviously I'm going to query the database passing this query here. And then I'm just going to return just basically a JSON object with the contents. And this is what you get back, right? 
And here the article, I'm only displaying the first 250 words uh, because articles are very long, but that will be the result that I get from full text search. So far, if you're not using generative AI, this is what's available to you. This is the best you can do. Well, there are other mechanisms, but this is one of the best ways for you to return information that's valuable for a user. Like if you're looking for a product, it's just doing basically full text search on that product or keyword based, based search. So let's see embedding search, which is very, very different and very, very cool. So in this case, I'm creating a sub query here. Okay. So this sub query, what's doing inside is it's using the embed model. Okay. Using the same embedding uh, model that I used to generate the original embeddings for that table. And I'm embedding this query here. Show me stories about police reports of deadly happenings involving cars and dogs. Okay. So notice is, is this same idea. Okay. But just written in English, like a normal query, like a user will want to know, right? This is very hard for a user to come up with. This is just natural, the natural way of somebody, uh, the way that somebody will use to ask. So I'm basically getting this query and I'm uh, embedding that query. So I'm generating an embedding on that query. And now I can use this specific embedding to, to measure the distance, to basically find any articles uh, whose embed or which embeddings are close to this one here. So look at this. Select ID, an article from CNN Daily Mail, ordered by the embedding. It's, you know, related to this one here. You see what I'm doing there? So I'm basically using the embedding of the articles and comparing those embeddings to this, the embedding of this query. And then I'm ordering them, ordering them. So at the top, I get the most similar embeddings. Okay. And then I'm limiting my search to 10 articles, right? So obviously, uh, if I don't limit the search, I'm going to get back every single article. It's just sorted by the embedding. So I'm only going to return the top 10. So when I run this query, <laughs> these are all of the articles that I get back. Notice that now the results contain much more information because it's not, they're not only limited to specific keywords. They're more about the semantic meaning of what the article describes and the closer uh, two article or the article describes that query, uh, the initial query, they show me stories about police reports, the more weight that article is going to have in this embedding search. So again, this is just a query that I'm running from within Postgres uh, to return those articles. I don't need any Python code to generate that query. I've seen many people uh, doing this same process but by retrieving all of the data from the database and then running that process in memory, obviously that wouldn't work when you have a lot of data because you're going to have to move all of the processing into memory instead of just using your database to do so. So here you can do it directly inside your progress database. This again, uh, this is just a PGAI running on top of a Postgres SQL database. It's open source. You can install it anywhere and it's super, super cool. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, take a look at PGAI and I'll see you in the next one.